Okay guys, let's be honest. It is likely that a significant amount of us did not get at least 7 and a half hours of sleep last night. If it happens to be the weekend, you may have gotten enough hours, but more than likely, you stayed up past midnight. Heck, some people don't even get enough sleep on weekends. Most people in a developed world are aware that 7 to 8 hours of sleep every night is optimal for the body. The American Sleep Association reports that adults need around 7 to 9 hours of sleep, while teenagers ideally require 8 to 10 hours. There are also numerous reasons as to why waking up early with a sound sleep is good for you as it gives you a fresh mind to start the day with at an early hour. Yet, many of us tend to stay up past our bedtimes. Why could this be? Before I start about what could be disturbing your sleep pattern, let me briefly explain how your sleep cycles work. You see, your body has an internal clock system known as circadian rhythms. Controlled primarily by portions of the hypothalamus in your brain, circadian rhythms act as your sleep-wake cycle sending neurotransmitters at different times of the day to control the state of your body. For example, to wake you up, your circadian cycle tells your brain to secrete hypocretin, along with several other neurotransmitters, which allows your body to rise and shine. On the other hand, you start to feel sleepy when your circadian rhythms secrete melatonin, which causes you to get drowsy and eventually put you to sleep. No, not this type! And just a little side note, please do not confuse melatonin with melanin, the skin pigment. It is because of the circadian rhythm that people naturally sleep and wake up at around the same time every day. Nevertheless, as neat as your internal timing system is, it could quite easily be manipulated, readjusting your sleeping times, or detrimentally disturbing the natural way of sleep for you. So what are some ways that your sleep could be interfered with? To start off, it is important to address that 50 to 70 million American adults are affected by some type of sleeping disorder, according to the ASA. That's somewhere around a quarter of all adults in the United States. According to a 2009 study by the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, around 35.3% of all Americans are sleep deprived. And that was nearly a decade ago. The numbers are actually much much worse for teenagers with some estimates saying that up to 90% of all teens come short of the 9 hours of sleep that the National Institutes of Health recommends. Thanks a bunch, high school! The Australian-based Sleep Health Foundation reports that 1 in every 3 people are at least mildly insomniac, while another study says that 10-15% to of all American adults are chronic sufferers of insomnia. So what could be contributing to this persistent lack of sleep? there are a plethora of sleep problems to contribute to the insomnia. For example, obstructive sleep apnea affects around 25 million American adults, as well as many teenagers and children. This condition makes it harder for people to have a sound sleep, as it disturbs their nocturnal breathing patterns. Snoring is a problem for around 48% of all American adults, and other lesser experienced problems such as restless leg syndrome and narcolepsy could promote sleeplessness. Some studies say that 1 in every 10 people experience sleepwalking at least once in their lifetime. Sometimes, to do with other health problems, people prescribe medicines that could cause your mind to stay awake at night, leading to, you guessed it, sleeplessness. There are also many negative emotional catalysts to insomnia, such as anxiety, stress, depression, or a combination of those sad feelings. Perhaps you are facing deadlines at school or work. Maybe you have an important presentation soon, and you are nervous. Or maybe, you're depressed because you finished up that one Netflix series, and you do not know what to do the rest of your life. But seriously guys, depression is nothing to joke about. These are just some feelings of negativity that could be keeping you from falling asleep on time. On the flip side, sometimes positive emotions such as excitement and anticipation also stimulate your mind, keeping your brain and body awake. Perhaps you have a really good day waiting for you tomorrow. Maybe your home team just won that big game against their rivals. Or maybe you finally got that promotion. Sometimes you may not be in any obvious state of emotion, yet your mind tends to rush as you try to sleep. This is quite natural as it takes a few minutes for your brain to really get ready for sleep. And likely this is just your mind trying to recollect the day's events. 
As a matter of fact, some say that the very reason for sleep is simply to process the day's memories. Nonetheless, letting your mind wander and race too much could delay your sleep as well. Since there is nothing for you to focus on before you sleep, your mind may likely go on tangents about random things, sometimes about things that may keep you from sleeping soundly. To help combat the random flow of thought, I personally like to read every night. Most preferably something peaceful, like a travel book. It gives me something relaxing to think about as I go to sleep. This has been my routine for years, and I guarantee myself at least some time to read every night before turning the lights off. And speaking of routines, that could also be something that keeps people up. For instance, are you the type of person who checks their newsfeed on their phone right before going to bed every night? If so, that could very well be one thing that keeps you up. As the blue light emitted by the screen confuses your brain, giving it the perception of sunlight. This prevents the creation of melatonin, preventing your body from getting tired. Although screen time is a very common activity that could prevent a good night's sleep, there are also many in other nighttime routines that could cause prolonged wakefulness. But why do we tend to stay up so late? Seriously. So far in this video, I've only discussed why your body can stay awake, most reasons being side effects of other issues, such as adverse feelings or daily habit. But the very reason I started this video in the first place is to discuss why we, especially adolescents and young adults, tend to stay up late at will. There are obviously too many reasons as to why we may choose to stay up past our circadian sleep time, but there are explanations that are quite similar for most people. For instance, our friend and enemy, peer pressure. How often do you stay up later than necessary on weekends because everybody else does so? Chances are, you consciously do not accept the fact, but subconsciously, your brain tells you to stay up a little longer because, why not, it's the cool thing to do. And with all due respect, it actually is pretty nice to stay up late, some nights. Although the defiant, experimental, limit-breaking nature of teenagers is definitely a contributing factor for adolescents staying up later than necessary, it is not just that that keeps many young people awake longer. Remember the circadian rhythms I mentioned earlier? Well, during <coughs> puberty, it is actually shifted back by a couple hours, messing up the system of melatonin secretion for teens and young adults. As a matter of fact, some studies say that teens naturally get sleepy at closer to midnight or even later, and this will continue on until the age of 25. So yes, if you are an adolescent watching this, you could very well blame your hypothalamus for your failure to sleep on time. But keep in mind, as I mentioned previously, your circadian cycles are quite manipulative, and if you spend enough time in the dark, you could manage to sleep as early as 8.30pm. So why don't we simply manipulate our bodies to sleep at an earlier time? The reasons are obviously depending on the person, but some common causes could be meeting work deadlines. In this case, your body adapts to staying up till the wee hours of the day to finish up whatever you have to do, although doing this in the long term is quite detrimental. Sometimes when you do something you really like and are deeply engaged in the activity, you experience a state of flow. When you focus so much on the task in hand that your perception of time and the importance of sleep is minimized. Personally, some activities that make me experience this state of natural high include creating these videos, making music, listening to music, and reading. This state usually occurs when your brain's reward system, based off of the neurotransmitter dopamine, encourages you to continue focusing on a task as it gives you pleasure and in some cases a sense of accomplishment. So what brings you to a state of flow? Please do comment below. But despite these factors, out of my personal experiences and inquiry, I noticed that most people I asked stay up late because of their phone. Well, at least the content in their phones. I mean, you gotta admit, you likely spent at least one night before browsing memes or binging on YouTube until it was pretty late. It's nothing that's really important, but why do we do it at the cost of sleep? Well, this all boils back down to your brain's reward system. The short-term pleasure received by spending the night on your device keeps the dopamine-based system running, giving you the desire for more and more new content, which could make you disregard sleep. Usually, you may go to bed not feeling tired enough, as the melatonin secretion has not started yet. So you decide to grab the nearest device to you and check your newsfeed. BIG MISTAKE! A few hours pass, 
and you're still awake, consistently getting clickbaited to entertain your dopamine receptors. So guys, these are simply some major reasons why sleeping on time could be difficult. Obviously, I cannot go over every single reason in this one video, and thus, there are a plethora of reasons for sleeplessness I have not covered in this video. So what tends to keep you awake? Please do comment below. And the next time you stay up late, this video is something to think about.